Hi everyone, welcome back to Mixed Media Soul Sparks. Sandra Duran Wilson here. And this time I have some interesting ways, or actually interesting surfaces, to move your paint on top of. I'm working on Yupo. And if you've never heard of it, it's a synthetic paper. It comes in different weights. This one's pretty thick. This one's a little thinner. And you can also get it almost translucent as well, which makes for some interesting um, ways you can use it. And if you like what you're seeing here, I also have extended Mixed Media Soul Spark bundles that you can get for only $20 for four videos. And I know there's one where I really go into more depth in a lot of these. So take a look and check out the website for all that information and how to get those episodes. So what I'm going to be doing here is pretty much this. This is the first layer I did. And if you come in real close, you can see a lot of history of where I moved that paint. And let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So I've got another piece here. I'm just going to set it on top of this panel because I'll also tell you how to adhere it to a panel if you like. I like to work with some gloss medium. This is a Holbein one. And I like it for this particular effect because it's very fluid and you can put it, mix it with your paint separate or you, you can even just mix it directly onto the surface. I'm going to mix them together like this. And when you get it on here, you see how beautiful it moves. And I like creating these kind of motions. This is another tool you can use to create lines. You can even go in with one of these tools, make patterns like this. You can see how I got kind of a little bit of a pattern like that on a very thin piece. But here's the thing is you wait for it to, to dry slightly and you move it. Let me just get it over here where you can see that shadow of where it had been before. These little lines coming up and it's those, those shadows that I really start to find interesting as I'm doing this. Now, you might not do an entire painting with this, but if you wanted to, to create parts and then cut this up and then adhere just a portion of it to another surface, and I'll show you how to do that. So I wanna come back now to this surface, which is already dry, and I'm gonna add a different color on top. I was trying to decide what color I might use, and I'm thinking I'm going to go with this really wild color of orange. Let me just put a little of this on top. You see how that can actually add some depth in there. So I'm going to keep some of that around. And back in here with this pyrrole orange, and I'm just going to put it directly onto there. And just, this is the, the lazy way to do it. And then I'll just mix it directly onto here. This orange is fairly transparent, and that's why I wanted to try this one. And look at how it really uh, pops some of that uh, magenta. This original layer was quinacridone magenta if you're wondering. So this is a great way to play around with different colors, different, um, you know, you could probably go with as many layers as, as you wanted, as long as you let them dry in between. And because you're working on a synthetic paper, it may take it a while to dry before you can do the next, the next layer. But uh, I'm going to come back in here with a little of this purple because if I start to mix it, I'm going to get something very different. 
So do you see the importance of waiting for it to dry in between? But that can add some nice dark lines. And you can, if you wanted to create a, a whole area, you could go a whole area of a more solid color. You could go in with a thicker layer. You could go in with a more opaque paint. You don't have to keep it so thin. You can just kind of build this up and create your own um, own design. You don't like it, you can rub it off like I just did there. And here's kind of an interesting thing. Even though that paint is dry, if I put some alcohol on here, let it sit for a moment, I can rub it all the way back to white. You see how it peels off? I can peel the whole thing off. Now, this can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. If you want your paint to stay on there, don't be throwing any alcohol on it. The other key is to really let it cure. Now, I had put this on this magenta on there last night, so it's been less than 24 hours that it's been curing. If I really want to make sure that that paint is going to stay there, really let it cure for several days. And the same with um, when you go to adhere this onto a panel. And what I use to do that is Elmer's glue. This is a more of the translucent um, Upo, I'm going to use this to blot off some of that extra paint. And you see, I'm just beginning to build up this layer. And if I can see that blue of my glove behind here. Lots of little tips to working with this. When I go to glue this onto the surface, I'm going to just spread the Elmer's glue over the whole thing. Make sure this has been very dry. I actually like to put a layer on both sides. And then I'm gonna use a brayer to push it down, weight it, and let it dry. But again, make sure this is fully cured. Give it a week to be sure before you start uh, doing that. But it's definitely worth exploring. You can get little um, packets of Upo it's great for drawing. You can actually add more pencil drawing to it. Experiment with it. Check out my uh, shop for where to get these products and check out my website for ideas for classes online or workshop, travel, adventure, you name it. So I hope you enjoyed this painting with Upo and I'll see you next time. Join the Creative Awakening community on Facebook, where you'll be able to post your art, connect with other creatives around the world, and ask questions. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks when posting your work on social media. Thanks for joining me, 